Greetings and salutations. This is Imperator Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. So we're doing a set of videos, which you may already know about by now, um, on the Babylon 5 fleets. The ones that we're playing with and people have been asking questions and stuff, so we kind of figured why not do army videos, like the army videos we did for Bolt Action and Hail Caesar and all the other stuff. So we decided to go class specific, didn't we? Yeah. So these are the ships that started the Dilgar War. Also along with these is the Lex class of ships, which we are not including in this because that's going to be a whole video to itself. Later on the Aegis class came out, that's a video to itself. And then you have the civilian merchantman, our merchantman which again, another video. So this is just for, this is Earth Force, it's in primary force yep. during the Dilgar War. So we will have to start with the most important ship, which is this one, which is the carrier. Avenger class. The Avenger class carrier, the first carrier created by Earth Force. Um, and we, it has seen a lot of combat in our games, has it not? Yes, it's one of my favourites. Yes, um, so it carries eight squadrons of Star Furies, the original version of Star Fury, um, which is not... Well, actually, Star Fury on the whole is a good ship. It is a good ship. Yeah. Um, forward firepower, it has four railguns, two railguns to the rear. Now, for Dilgar War, that's great. Well, railguns have a range of 15 centimetres. They're short-range weapons, but during the Dilgar War, everything was short-range. So that was good. We found out that during the Membari War they were useless. Um, it also has a number of 400mm pulse cannon, there's four of them, and a lot of missiles. That's about it really. It's a medium class ship so it, it's not very tough, uh, but it's got quite a lot of structure. Very, very slow. Has its own jump engines though. Doesn't really need the speed of Scott Staff here, is you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So this is really an early invention of Earth Force. It's a sort of brand new ship to come out, and it is the primary fleet carrier for Earth Alliance. It would be replaced by the Essex class. Is it the Essex class? Yep. Yeah, um, because the Essex class, they really needed to up gun. It's and fantastic, that one. Yes, they were desperate for the Essex class to come out. And I will show you a quick Essex class here. This is the Essex class. That was my, that was my actual favourite. Yeah, one. and this is actually a conversion of a head gland. Um, simply. Um, so... It doesn't have any real special rules to it. The Hegland and all the other ships like that do. Uh, it has a Dead Space special rule. Um, but this one doesn't have any special rules. It is merely a carrier. Yeah. Um, it's more like a submarine than the carrier, to be honest. Um, I always regard it as a submarine for some reason. Um, and it pretty much fits in with the outlook of Earth Force at the time. The carriers are not warships. They do not need large amounts of guns on them because they did not expect the carrier to ever actually be in frontline combat. That's what all these little tiny ships are for. Um, it's, it's not designed for proper combat. Of course, in real life, um, for in Babylon 5 universe, carriers need a huge amount of firepower yeah. because they're going to be hit. They're, gonna, they're a target. And the Dilgar, of course, targeted carriers in a big way yeah. um, because carrier groups was how the Dilgar operated. They were massive carrier groups, and they knew to take out our carriers first. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately the Avenger class never really, never really caught on. It was, it was the beginning of the yeah, of it, Earth Force. Because it, it, it doesn't have any firepower of itself. Yeah. Firepower is, uh... yeah. Good as a command ship, though. And the next is the Olympus class Corvette. Yes, um, I have several Olympuses. Uh, this is the only one I could find. I don't know where the others have gone. Uh, this is the one it hasn't got its uh, docking arms on. It, uh, this one's just got, uh, got extra cannon on the side. Um, so this is the Olympus Corvette. It is, uh, it is, it is a tiny little vessel. Um, good side to it. It does carry Star Furies, which has a hangar bay. 
Um, so he carries 12 star furies, that's pretty good. It has railgun for the time, era specific, okay. It has two pulse cannon, that's not much. And then it's got a couple of auto cannon to protect it with. Not the best ship in the world. And not much to say about it. No. At the time, as a patrol boat, as a corvette to protect convoys, actually useful. Carries star furies, a little bit of firepower, no, nowhere near enough to fight a ship with, but it's just for defence. Um, and it's really used for patrolling outer colonies, that's really it. It's a support ship, it's not meant to operate in any other way. Um, it's also remarkably cheap. Oh, do we need to mention the price? Uh, the Avenger puts you back 2890 making it extremely expensive. This baby costs you 310 with all its um, star viewers on board. It's too expensive. Yes, still expensive, but... Uh, next, the Veil class system patrol boat. Yes, well... This one. Now we're getting into the system patrol craft. Um, Earth Force had a lot of system patrol craft at the outbreak of war. Many were privately owned. There was a kind of a merchant guild before EA, well before the war, but EA took over. Um, there were a lot of outer colonies that didn't have military forces protecting them. Um, so Earth Force did fund some ships to go out there and protect the outer colonies. Honestly, Earth Force wasn't expected to be fighting wars. Earth mm. Alliance, sorry. Well, um, they kind of thought the universe was a place where you sell stuff. Um, so yeah, they did. They did come up with a lot of system patrol craft. System patrol craft will all look different because many are actually built on their world where they're patrolling. And it consists of eight railguns on all sides. Really? That's yeah. pretty good. Mm. Yeah. Um, six torpedoes. That's pretty good as well. One to five. That's it. Yeah, they're single use, aren't they? Uh, pulse cannons, four of them, and two on each side. It's better than Olympus. Pretty good. Um, and 20, uh, 12, um, 24 missile pods, 12 on each side. And then particle beans is defence. They'll only put you, put you back 110. Yes. So um, a, a decent standard ship for only 110. Yes, no jump engines. No, god no. No. Um, and so it doesn't get any fleet bonuses. No, oh no, because it's PDF. PDF don't get fleet bonus. Um, so if you get a bonus, if you get bonus rules for a fleet, like you've got a really good captain, these guys ignore it. They don't follow the orders of your grand fleet. They are, they are local engineers and stuff, or local police who are fighting, and they're not part of your fleet. What's next? next? I have the Ypres class gunboat. Ypres. Ypres. This one. Yes, the Yp. It has no railguns. No, no. Well, it consists of a 520 millimeter pulse cannon. Four of them forward. That's pretty good. Yeah, good pulse cannon then. Yeah. Um, and it has 400 millimeter pulse cannons. Uh, one, four, and two. So one at the front, four at the sides, and two at the back. Same defense as the. Mm -hmm. Is the. Yeah, I forget. As the Veil class, um, and it only goes uh, no jump engines again. It yep. does get the fleet initiative, uh, and it only pushes back 40 points. 40 points? 40 that points. That must be the cheapest ship in the game. Most probably. Yeah. So, not much to say about them. So, uh, it's a big fighter. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 How's fast? It, uh 20. Actually, quite fast. Quite fast, Quite fast for this hero. I think they're all 20, if I'm honest with you. That's not bad. Uh, next, the Nexu class gunboat. Now this is an upgrade, isn't it? This is actually yes, just pack some firepower. It's basically kind of the same ship, but it's upgraded it. Yeah. Um, this one is um, four five hundred twenty millimeter pulse cannons with two on the sides, um, uh, two rail guns on all sides. Same um, defense, uh, same secondary uh, defense weapons as the Ypres, and same. Uh, Inceptors, but uh, this one is double the amount of points, uh, standing at 80 points. So it's Pulse Cavern here. Pulse Cavern. Not really, only because it has two on the side, it's because ah. it has railguns too. Right, so that will take on a raider. Yeah, it will take. You, could, you can take on a raider with that, you could take on a system patrol craft, uh, an enemy 
scout, possibly. Not a Membari scout. <laughs> a Membari scout will destroy this entire fleet. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. So that's a decent, a decent buy, really. Uh, the downside to these ones, all these ones here on this side, are uh, you, you don't get them. Um, if you lose, they can't, you lose. they can't jump. So you either have to have it accompanied with a ship with a jump engine, Hopefully it lives. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing about Earth Force, because Earth Force covered such a large area, a lot of ships have jump engines. Most ships have jump engines. Delgar, not so much. Delgar relied on having ships with jump engines. Some racers, like the Markab, had actual jump ships. Yeah. So their ships had no jump engines at all. They relied on a really rubbish, unarmed ship, which carried the job of a jump engine. <laughs> Um, that's a problem with all the League Worlds, actually. A very limited amount of jump engines. Earth Force, big on jump engines. Very important. You need a jump engine to get out of system. Or in system. So I have my uh, other one, which is the Typhoon Class Nuclear Missile Frigate. Ah, well, yes. Uh, this one's very expensive, guys, compared to the others you've seen. Uh, standing at a 860 points. Yes, I've done three of these. Um, one has a couple of hatches open, just here. Um, show the hatches open. This one has its hatches closed, and this one has all its doors open, firing all its missiles. This so, consists of four railguns. Can fight them. Six torpedoes. Very good. Um, 400 millimeter pulse cannons. Yeah. Four of them. Um, 198 atomic missile pods, all at the front. And um, what is the thing about the at atomic missile pods as opposed to missile pods? Uh, they do two damage. Yes. Uh, standard missiles do one damage, and they're light or medium. Medium, okay. Um, atomic missile pods are still medium, aren't they? Yes. But they do two damage, yep. which is the same damage as a Star Fury dropping its bombs. Very powerful. Um, and then you, later on, by the time you get to... Um, proper Earth Force, you've got red missile pods. That's these guys carry red missile pods. Yep. They're heavy and they will do a lot of damage. Downside to missile pods, very few ships have a reload. Indeed. Which means if you've got how many missiles? It's got 198 missiles. That's pretty good. It is pretty good, but yeah. it does set you back 860 points. It does. And in the middle of a war, when you try to save points, it doesn't have much superstructure, only 12 superstructure. Yeah. It needs to be very safe. And if it is using its torpedoes, it's very close to the enemy, within 15 to 20 centimetres of an enemy. You do not want that. No, because you're volatile. Indeed. So if you get one critical, you actually get two because you're volatile. You double your critical. It's very yeah. dangerous. Um, so yeah, uh, but it does have jump engines. So if you, do, if you don't want to fight anymore, you just leave. I would guess the idea is, is you launch your missiles and then leave. Yes, but this does come with auto cannon, but I presume that will be future war. No, the, the auto cannon did exist, exist in, in early war. It's just not many ships had auto cannon because they're very expensive to run power wise. But it does have 12 particle beam bags right at the front. Right, so how many auto cannon they got? Two on each side. Right, mm -hmm. not that good. It's all around. Yeah. So it's quite good. See, you've got two types of interceptors for humans. Wait till we get to the Membari. Yeah. They have automatic shields oh. and everything. Um, for interceptors, uh, that is stopping shells hitting you, stuff hitting you. So your particle banks are literal particle guns. That they fire shells, guns, particles, bits at targets that at things that are coming in in the desperate hope to make it explode before it hits you. Yeah. Right. So imagine a sci-fi film where the shots coming in and, and the shots are hitting and stopping it. In fact, watch Babylon 5. You actually see them in action. Um, the 120mm uh, autocannon, they are actually quad-mounted autocannon. Babylon 5 has a lot. They're really very common later on. And what they do, they put so many shells up and they create a plasma field, which will stop things like plasma weapons hitting your ship. Mm -hmm. But you need a lot of them. Yeah. Because I think you're hitting on sixes, aren't you? What with? Uh, with uh, let's have a look. Let's just check the rules. Ah, in a rule book. Hang on. Huh? Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's just for heavy. I mean, if it's anything higher than heavy, which is um, what we look at with Barry, really, it can't do anything. 
Right, so you can't stop heavy shots coming in? Yeah, see the Mimbari, they're lucky because they get, they can block anything, even super heavy. They, they yeah, we're not chance. talking about Mimbari no, now, right? No, no. Uh, but yeah, um, I think early war, it was mainly just he heavies, lights and mediums, weren't it? Yes. So it's got a very good chance at defending itself. Yeah, especially against the League Worlds. Mm. Um, I think mainly you're using them to intercept missiles and stuff, aren't you? Yeah, it's mainly That's... missiles. I mean, like, it's, it literally says here that most of the point defence and tractor beams are mainly good at getting missiles shot down, not much else. Yeah, because you're firing a beam weapon, you know, your chances of stopping a beam weapon with something like a cannon or, or a particle beam, it's you might cause debris to make the beam go somewhere else. Yeah. That's pretty much. Um, yeah. And remember, beam weapons are actually plasma, superheated plasma. Yeah. Uh, so are lasers, by the way. Lasers are also superheated plasma. Um, so, should we carry on with the video? We're at 16 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, we're already half a fruit. So. Yeah, so, moving on to the next class. Uh, that is the Hyperion. Now, the Hyperion is the most recognisable ship, probably, other than the Amiga. This is the Hyperion. It's a... It is a standard Earth Force ship. At this time, it is a heavy cruiser. Now, the reason it is called a heavy cruiser, when you look at something like that, and that's a destroyer, right? The heavy cruiser is because this is your fleet you're dealing with. Yeah. So, that actually is a heavy cruiser at this period of history. Um, it is a light gunboat by the Mimbari War, but it's still called a heavy cruiser. Has yeah. it got heavy armour? Do you want to do you want to do this one? Yeah, yeah. Right, there you go. Um, it has medium armour. Medium armour, okay. Um, comes with four rail guns to the front. Um, 400mm pulse cannons, three on each side. Uh, torpedo tube to the front. Good. Uh, particle beams. It uh, has um, one breaching pod, uh, but it comes with star theories, but only six of them. Yes. Alright, so... But it will only put you, put you back with 265 points each. Uh, and it comes with a jump engine, um, that's pretty, and it's very fast, 25 centimetres. Yeah. So it's a good ship, and they're uh, still used today. And because they are a good ship, they're pretty tough. Um, medium armour is tough, considering it is tough. most things are light. Um, 12 superstructure, it's not going to stand up against a warship. If there's lots of them, it can stand up. Yeah, it's not designed to stand up against a warship. Uh, Earth Force didn't know they were going to be meeting warships for a start. <laughs> um, then they met the Markab and went, ooh, ooh, warships. warships. <laughs> well, luckily the Markab was sort of, do you want to buy stuff? And we're like, yeah. Sure, no problem. Then we met the Narn, and we went, oh god. And the Narn went, do you want to buy stuff? And we went, yeah. Then we met the Centauri. Actually, no, we already met the Centauri. Don't, don't talk about them. We already buy stuff the first ones, really. Yeah, uh, they actually gave us jump technology, so yeah. good for them. Um, so the Hyperion is the standard ship, which is why there's so many of them. There's, uh, what, eight? No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we've, we own seven Hyperions, which are these guys. They're great. They're, they're the standard... I'd say it's a standard warship of the Dilgar War era. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lex class had already come out. Yeah. But the Lex class never really caught on. They're, they're, they're... And you'll realise that why. Like, yes, we were going to Lex... try to do. Yeah, the yeah. Lex class was very quickly superseded by the Aegis. The Aegis was a stopgap which never really caught on either. And that was very easily moved on. Yes. <laughs> so there were a lot of designs which we have in our huge fleets. Which, when you saw our big video introducing the whole thing, a lot of ships came out... Very temporarily. They were very temporary ships, but they were, are still knocking around. They are still ships of this class around, usually out in the middle of nowhere, defending at, like, Proxima 3, or <laughs> something like that. Right, so... Or being towed. Or, or being towed, yes. <laughs> or, or being used as freighters. Um, so we'll go into the next one, um, which is your actual favourite of this era. This is my favourite ship of all yes. The time. yes. My Gladys friend. Yes. The Gladys, which I actually agree with you. Yes, I really do like it. Um, it sets you back 620 points, and you're about to find out why. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So it comes with eight railguns at the front, 
which is standard. But just um, mention they have rail guns, right? Yeah. Rail guns, we, when we do our f games, we make fun of rail guns. Yes. Because they are 50 centimetres range, but, and they only do one damage. Yes. One. But they are heavy. Heavy penetration. Now, in the Dilgar War, very little is heavy. Most weapons are light and medium. Right? In fact, I don't think the Earth Force battleship has any heavy guns, does it? Air Force battleship? Yeah, uh, the Nautilus. No, I think it does have rail guns on it, yeah. It has rail guns, yeah, but it doesn't have its no, primary guns no, out of just rail guns and missiles. Lots of missiles. Lots, Lots of missiles, missiles. yes. Um, it's, it has 400 mm pulse cannons. Yeah. Uh, six at the front, nine at the sides, and 12 at the back. That is well armed. Yes. And if you want an extra firepower on the sides, you get 20 missiles on each side. And the best thing of all is you get four flights of staff years. Four sets of twelve. That makes it, for this era, probably the best ship in the game. Yeah, and it can defend itself. Yeah. On all sides, eight interceptors. What type? Particle beams. No, no, no. It can still block something. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has jump engines. It uh, has 18 superstructure, so it's not, it, can, it can hold itself. Yeah. But only medium armour. You see, again, most things back then were medium armour already. Also, um, it is actually two of these put together. Yeah, if right? you could tell. Now, normally that would massively increase the amount of hull. Unfortunately, when they put the two together, they took all the insides out of the one side of the, each of the ships. Therefore, it's only got 18 structure, whereas it should really have 24. But it's only got 18 because they ripped all the internals out to make them into hangar bays. Yep. So it hasn't actually got much more toughness on top. Um, that is the downside to it. As a carrier, it's probably the most squishy carrier <laughs> in the game as well, isn't it? Which is cheap. It is cheap. It's really it's cheap. Very cheap. Very I mean, cheap. The Avenger class, that's a carrier that has double the amount of flights. Yes. And that cost, what, 2,800, wasn't it? 3,000. Almost, almost 3,000? Yeah. This one is only 620. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah. Because it's got no... Um, it, 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 it dies if you shoot it. Indeed, but, yes. But it is, it is good. But and it shouldn't I, be on its own. It should have, no. it should have people around it, like especially Hyperions. I mean, if it's with Hyperions, you've got a good chance. They've all got auto cannons. And that is the idea. The, this one is not a main warship. It is a carrier for the Hyperions. Yeah. And also, if you launch your Hyperions, your, your six fighters in each Hyperion, you need them to go somewhere. If your Hyperion gets taken out, you have a carrier with four spare decks on board. Yeah. which can take them aboard. Hence the massive amounts of docking bay inside it. So it's a re retrieval ship for fighters. And uh, it can jump, which is the best thing about it. And, and it's got a jump engine. Off, so yeah. yeah, something goes wrong, goodbye. Well, off. Hyperions all have jump engines. Yes. Yes. I've, one of the few light ships that do. Ah, the next ship, the one the Membara hate the most. This is the Codex Class Electronic Warfare Jamming Ship. Where is she? Right at the back. Where the back? Oh, I can see her. There she is. Oh, um, it minuses one to enemy initiative as soon as it's on the table. Yeah. And it, it, within, it within 40 centimeters of any enemy, it's minus one to their targeting. So if you're within 40 centimeters of any ship, you're minus one to their targeting systems, regardless of what they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's 25 centimeters thrust with 90 degrees turn. Each target turns. Which is very, very manoeuvrable. Very manoeuvrable. Um, it has 520mm pulse cannons, none at the front. Sides and back. Okay. Rail guns at the front now, sides and back. Um, I assume the reason for that is the fact that it is a jammer. Yeah. And if you put guns along the jam line, then it's going to disrupt your own jamming system. Yeah, it has 400mm pulse cannons. You can see the jammer on the bottom. And torpedoes, but hardly any path will be banks. Right, so it can't protect itself. So it takes you back 510 points, and really you're just paying for the minus one to the initiative and targeting, defend the ship. And your card? Your card? Your minus one initiative. That's, that's what it said. No, 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 it's me. So yeah, um, just, just make sure you have ships around it. Yeah. What we normally do when we play, we always have that ship right at the back, within 40, 40 centimetres, and the rest of the fleet in front of it. Yeah, I always have a guard ship with it. Yeah, to protect it. Right. So, who's next? The Langley class heavy cruiser. The Langley, right. Well, here's the Langley back here. Um, Are you ready for this? Yeah. Now, do you, want, do you want a bit of the history of the Langley first? Sure. Um, the Langley came about. 
before the Dilgar War started, um, Earth, uh, EA Intelligence had come up, knew quite a bit about the Dilgar. They knew the Dilgar used lasers. Now, the humans didn't have any lasers. You may notice none of these ships have lasers. Right? Um, they're the things that go beam and cut ships open and cut them in half. Mm -hmm. Earth Force had none of that stuff. And so they, when they knew things were going on, they approached the Centauri and said, you can't, you can't anything better than a pulse cannon. And now, the Centauri government, um, under the new Emperor Tyrann, who had only just taken power at this point, wanted to try and keep the Centauri out of the Dilgar War. However, House Malari um, was more than happy to flog a few laser batteries to us, but only the parts. They wouldn't actually give us, they wouldn't give us the actual weapons. Um, so we were able to use this tech from the Centauri and a bit of help from the Nan to assemble them um, and we actually built the Langley which is the lasers here. And you may notice the lasers on the end of stanchions because they had a tendency of blowing up. Law wise anyway. Mm. Um, so this is the first ship to be fitted with lasers um, that the humans have. So do you want to take it away? The first thing I will mention is that this ship has no jump engines, but for a reason. Correct. So the jump engine is used to power the turrets. Yes. Uh, because I have a feeling that the turrets take a lot of power. Yes. So, yeah. Well, I will mention something else about the Babylon 5. Um, everything is based, you can't just get a ship and say it's got 500 lasers. <laughs> right? Because it's the engine, the engine power decides what you can have on your ship. You have a limitation as to what you can carry. And... If you're going to put lasers on something like a Hyperion, you're taking out your jump engine. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Um, it will. It has eight heavy laser barriers at the mm -hmm. front, four at each side, and eight at the back. Yes, which is basically the same guns firing in different directions. Mm. Remember. Uh, the usual 520 millimeter millimeter pulse cannon, none at the front. Yeah. As it's everywhere else though, and two rail guns at the front. For secondary weapons, it has a 400mm pulse cannon, three at the front and two at each side, uh, along with two torpedo tubes and uh, a, just a bit of defence. Um, and that will set you back with 440 points. Which isn't bad. That's very good. But then again, it has no Star Furies. Nope. And it has no jump engines. They have those barriers. So it has to be brought in. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the big downside to the ship. But it is a ship capable of taking on anything the Dilgar have. It can kill a Dilgar warship. Literally. Or a Markab warship, even. <laughs> um, right, so now we're on to the last ship of this whole fleet, Indeed, have we yeah. not? So I will go and grab them. This is the Blitzkrieg class heavy cruiser. Yes, now I you do the spiel and then I'll tell you about it. Okay. This does have jump engines. Yes. Its main weapon is the Aegis Pulse Bolter on the sides. Which are fitted to the sides of the ship and it actually only one side can fire because it's the same power source that fires either way. Yeah. Uh, it has two rail guns, 400mm pulse cannons on the side and back, two torpedo tubes at the front and very little particle beam banks. Yes. And that'll set you back 210 points. Yes. Now. This is not this, this right. When the Dilgar War was starting, the hu the Dilgar's primary weapons they had lasers, but they also had. I'm going to just adjust that. It's going a bit funny. Um, they had they had lasers, and they also had something called the Bolter. Right, the Bolt gun was an extremely powerful plasma cannon, very short range, very short range. What range is it? 15 centimetres. 15 so 15 centimetres range on this gun. Right? Very short range. 30 centimetres. Really? 30 centimetres. 30 centimetres. 30, right. Still, right, still relatively short range. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the bolter fires a bolt of plasma, or a shell of plasma, which will hit an enemy ship and, and splat on it and melt through the hull. So they're very powerful weapons. The Dilgar used them. Other races didn't use them. They were considered... Nasty, 
and a Dilgar weapon. Earth Force doesn't care about that, so Earth Alliance <laughs> didn't care. Um, they managed to get hold of a, a special operations unit, captured a Dilgar ship, and they took the Bolters out and very quickly retrofitted a version of Bolter which they fitted to a Hyperion. Now, Bolters do actually pop up quite a bit after that in Earth Force. There are a few ships that do carry Bolters. They are very energy intensive, but they're okay. They're a decent weapon. Short range, not really liked by other races. Other races kind of frowned upon humans for using the Bolter. Um, the Bolter really became silly when it was fitted to the Tillman, <laughs> which was basically a Bolter carrier. Yeah. A huge amount of bolt guns mounted to it. Hence not moving. Hence not moving, yes, no <laughs> engines. Um, so, yes, this is just in time for the Dilgar War, the Bolter version came out um, just because we, we, need, we thought we needed something to take the Dilgar on. So really between this and the Langley, these were the first human ships to be built to actually deal with a perceived problem, which, is, which was our initial experience of the Dilgar. Yeah. And the Dilgar War then started in earnest, and this is the human fleet which was used to fight the Dilgar with. Yep. Our next video will be, as the Dilgar War has begun, we will see what else the humans were able to come up with, with their new designs. Yep. So that is the end of this video. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and comment down below what you think of the Hyperion and Gunboat classes of ships. Yes. That's everything from me. And everything from him. Goodbye. See ya.